and the three is the princess and the warrior. Let's go. Once upon a time, there lived a kind and beautiful princess named Ita. Ita. Even though she was the daughter of an emperor, she loved to spend time with the people who grew corn in the milk milpas. She liked to teach them poetry of or flor, flor e can. To shooters traveled from this distant land to Uhu. They present her with rare and lavish gift, such as quatel feathers and turquoise necklace. They would all say the same thing. You are the most beautiful maiden in the land. May marry me, princesses, and you will live in my luxury palace. You won't have to spend time in the field ever again. No, thank you. Is it a old reply? She was not interested in any of the shooters, shooters or their gift. One day, a warrior named Popo Popoka came to see her. See her, princesses. I know you have a kind and beautiful heart, for I have seen you teaching Flor e Canto to the villagers in the mill pits. I don't have expensive gift to offer, but if you marry me, I promise that I will love you for who you are. I will stay by your side no matter what, as long as tone tonetage rises, as long as the San John Tru uh, bird sings. Popoka's words were music to Ista's ears. She could hear the honesty, a honesty in his voice, and she fell in love with him. The emperor did not want his daughter to marry a mere soldier. He wanted her to marry a wealthy and powerful Tlatonia, a Tlatoni, a ruler. But he knew that Popoka was the war with Jaguar Clar. The Tlatoni of a neighboring land for years, and there seemed to be no end in sight. He called Popka to see to him. Popka, the emperor said, "If you defeat Jaguar Clar once and for war, I will let you marry my daughter Ista." Popka and Ista were overjoyed. Popka gathered his most courageous men and marched to war. Popka fought numerous battles. He and his men were injured and almost defeated many times. But when the end seemed near, Popka would always think of Ista, waiting for his return. He would defend himself with his chilmeli, attack with his macolity. Macolito, and inspire his men to fight with even more courage than before. Slowly, the tide turned, and Popka and his men began winning battles. 
it was clear that they would seen the fat juggler Clark. Realizing this, Juggler Clark devised a plan to steal from Popka what the warrior cherished most. He bribed one of Popka's personal messengers. Tell Ista that Popka has been killed. The and offer her this potion, Octil, so to soothe her grief. Everything is lost, princess. Princesses, the messenger said sadly. When he arrived at the palace, Popka and his men fought bravely, but they were defeated and killed. No, that cannot be! Cried Insta. She looked herself in her chamber and wept, and refused to eat or speak with anyone. That night, the messenger came to her room. I know your heart is shattered, as if it were made of obsidian glass, he said. But. Take this drink, princesses. It will help ease your grief. Ista took the potion and drank it all, lying down on her petal. Petalette. She fell into a deep sleep. The next day, before night fell and the first chiltali. Appeared in the sky, Popka defeated Jaguar Claw. Unaware of the lies the messengers had told, the great warrior and his troop marched back to the palace in Tulum, Tulum, tri Triumph, ready to share the good news with the princesses and the empire. But when they arrived, they were met with the belief. Popka said, the "Emperor, Emperor, one of your messengers told us that you were dead. Ista was heartbroken. She took a special octil to ease her pain, and now we cannot wake her. This can't be true." Said Popka, "Ista, my beautiful princesses, have to waken, waken." He ran to her chamber. He kissed her and held her in his arms. He called out her name over and over, but Ista did not wake up. Cool air will surely revive her, Popka told the emperor. He carried Ista through the throngs of village villagers, who wept as they passed past the millets, mill pass, and all through the night to the top of a temple. He laid her on a 